Hey, it's Mary. I know so many of you have decided I'm going to wait to change my relationship to alcohol until after the holidays are over. Well, I want you to know you're making a huge mistake. And I say that with so much love. The holidays are the absolute best and easiest time to change your relationship with alcohol. And over the next three episodes on the podcast, Stop Drinking and Start Living, I am going to explore and break down every myth that you have and overcome all of your objections, give you some actual exercises and embodiment practices to do in a workshop format so that you can step into this holiday season and expedite your results to changing your relationship to alcohol. Do not miss these powerful, powerful episodes. Show up distraction-free and ready to take some notes. I'll see you there. Welcome, welcome. My name is Mary Wagstaff. I am a holistic alcohol coach who ended a 20-year relationship to alcohol without labels, counting days, or ever making excuses. Now I help women just like you from around the world do the same with my one-on-one private coaching program. In this podcast, we will explore my revolutionary approach to getting alcohol out of your way that breaks all the rules, life-enhancing tools that make not drinking exciting and joyful, and the profound and sacred journey that it is to rediscover who you are on the other side of alcohol. This show is not a substitution for rehabilitation, medical treatment, or advice, so please talk to a medical professional if your alcohol consumption is at risk to your mental or physical health. Now on with the show. Hello, my beautiful listeners. Welcome back to another episode of Stop Drinking and Start Living. If you're new to the show, I know we have a ton of new listeners. Thank you so much for being here. It's so exciting. It is so freaking awesome to get feedback from you beautiful ladies about how you're showing up to really implement the tools that you're listening here on the show. So feel free to send me any request about anything that you would like me to talk about. I'm happy to answer an anonymous question on the show, mary at marywagstaffcoach.com. And of course, I'm always available to for an alignment session so you can kind of see where your habitual thought patterning is really creating the negative emotions that are hindering you from taking the action to get the result that you want in life. In my program, we, I call it, what flavor of tea are you drinking? So T-E-A, thoughts, emotions, and actions. And if we just say, hmm, what's the flavor of tea that I'm sipping on right now? It's a little reason I really like this. It's kind of cutesy and a little cheesy, but it is, I mean, it is the way that the brain works is that our thoughts generate vibrations. Um, is first of all, when you stop drinking alcohol, you end up like really enjoying tea more. I know I do because it's like, it is a medicinal, right? And it's soothing and it's comforting. It's this like really beautiful thing of of self-love. But is that the flavor is very specific, right? I mean, I kind of put thought, um, the flavors into two bigger categories of fear-based thoughts and love-based thoughts, but there is a specific flavor and you know when you're thinking about your work or your husband or your children or your um, relationships that they all have a different flavor. And so it's really good and it's a really beautiful process of getting to know yourself when you understand the different flavors of tea in which you create. So I'm just so glad you're here. And again, reach out for any support. Today on the show, I'm going to be airing a podcast interview. I was interviewed on a show from a beautiful mother and daughter team, Erica and Lynn Hicks, on their podcast called The Holistic Magical Healing Arts. And so I was talking about my magical healing art, which you all know about, which is holistic alcohol coaching. Um, And... The reason that I really want to share this with you is so first of all, so you can get to know me a little bit better because I'm not out in the world on social media so much um, and you can hear a little bit more about my story, but the story is very inspiring. It is about, it kind of adds on to last week's about making decisions. It was about me stepping in to making new decisions, not from, oh, I don't know, I don't want to, I don't feel like it, even that thought. I don't feel like it. That is a thought. What kind of vibration does that generate for you when you say that? What flavor of emotion? I don't feel like it. Low, kind of lazy, kind of a meh, right? 
So instead of saying that, I knew I wanted change. I knew I wanted to grow my business. I knew I needed to be a better example for my son. I wanted to be. I I knew alcohol needed to get the fuck out of the way. Pardon my French. I don't swear. I've been trying not to swear, but I've been swearing. I'm passionate. Um, And, you know, I said, I declared it as a year of yes. And I just got excited. And I know how to meet people. I knew how to meet people without alcohol. That wasn't the problem. But it was that, well, I'm usually drinking, you know, and it's going to interrupt my drinking, frankly, is what the whole thing was. So I knew I needed to meet new people. I knew I needed like just some more influence, like to kind of shake up the energy, like a change of scenery, right? Change of scenery and the vibe. So I said yes and invested my time, my money, my vulnerability, my energy into a women's empowerment retreat. And I met these beautiful women that you'll hear and you'll hear all about that. But I just want you to know that it was in that moment that I decided and I had to invest money that I had to put on a credit card and I had to pay off. It was the best thing I've ever done for my life. It created a ripple effect. One decision, saying yes to one thing, can change so much in your life. You have no idea. And so I had that experience. And if it would have changed nothing, I still would have had that experience that was amazing, that was connecting with a sacred sisterhood and women and the divine feminine in a way that opened me up to so much I didn't even know was missing. I could feel it, but I didn't even know, right? So that's what I want you to think about as you listen to this interview. And we talk a lot about the feminine mysteries and Lynn and Erica are very versed in different holistic arts themselves. And so I really encourage you to check out their podcast. Of course, their link will be in the show notes. Erica and Lynn, you're beautiful. You're wonderful. I can't wait to see you again in the future. You're doing amazing work. And I just hope everyone has a beautiful day. Enjoy the show. Bye. On today's episode, we have Mary Wagstaff, who is a holistic alcohol coach and a yoga teacher and works with the divine feminine. So I'm really excited for her to talk about her magic and what her magical art is. So Mary, tell our listeners what your magical art is. I just wanted to first of all say thank you guys so much for having me. And I, it's just so good to see you guys both together again. Um, even if we're at a distance, <laughs> yeah. uh, I can feel your vibes for sure. Um, well, my magical art <laughs> is one of many. Um, I do currently work as a holistic alcohol coach. So I help women stop drinking and examine their relationship with alcohol um, and really move into that next level of their life and really decide to live a life that they love. So um, the approach is a little bit different where we're not just stopping drinking, but we're you know really moving into the future focused version of yourself um, and to get into what's possible as a woman, as a, you know, as an amazing, awesome woman. And um, so that is one of the things that I'm really, really interested in, you know, getting out into the world because I really feel like my approach is quite different than traditional approaches of just white knuckling willpower. um, And it's really coming from a place of inspiration, creativity, uh, compassion, and allowing. And so personally, one of my magical powers, and I believe it's your magical power too, Mm -hmm. as women is our... um, is our emotional body. It's something that I am constantly developing and I'm really wanting my clients to tune into more and more. Um, It was really the piece that um, helped me break through my relationship with alcohol was tuning into that divine feminine essence of being an emotional woman. And I think for so many centuries, um, it's really been repressed as women. And I do think it is our superpower. I think it's our tool for pleasure and power. And it's actually a privilege to be able to tune into those phases uh, of the self. And, you know, we work with the moon phases because she is that reflection of our internal rhythms. And when we can tune into that, and like you were saying, Lynn, like the allowing piece is just like such a guide, uh, you know, a compass for, hey, what's going on with my body, with my relationship with this person? Am I holding on to a story that doesn't serve or that's not even true? <laughs> you know, we hold on to these stories, especially around alcohol, that just were like, yeah, maybe that was true once, but like I'm a different person now and I want new things. And so, really helping women find 
um, and, you know, really tuning into and honoring and owning their emotional body, I think is one of the most magical powers not only do I have, but I think all human beings have, but especially women. And I just think it's been repressed and we've been told that we're too emotional, we're too bitchy, we're too sensitive, we're too excitable, we're too this, we're too that, or silly, or not serious. And it's like, no, sorry, no more. <laughs> so that's definitely something day by day by day. And as, as I get older too, I really have to, um, to honor that and not feel guilty when I'm in a phase where it's, you know, I'm like, I'm a busy body. My partner's a busy body. He runs around all the time. And I'm sometimes I'm like, I need to just sit and chill. Like, I just don't want to do all the things today. And I really want to take a day just to be and rest in the hammock and look at the trees and whatever. And that's been something, um, I don't know if I grew up with some more masculine energy, but just being is definitely a practice. Um, but I think is a superpower because it kind of recharges you and it lets you enjoy the intricacies of the life around us. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know what? I want to um, make a comment because that just be like w when you're saying women and I share in that emotional nature and supporting people to find that peace with that, mm -hmm. you know, we are on a cycle, like you said, the moon reflects and there is that time in our cycle every month where we are naturally just wanting that involution, okay. that um, settled connection with ourself. And we don't honor that because we don't honor the rhythm that we are different. And because mm -hmm. it is that patriarchal 24 seven versus we dance, we're mm -hmm. syncopated. Where the emotional nature is like the artistry and the rhythm and mm -hmm. the fun of things. It's not like a march. And so I think yes. naturally every month we have that state of wanting to be in Venus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And we just don't really always honor it or we talk ourselves out of it or whatever. So kudos for yeah. supporting women and noticing. I mean, it is, it's a practice for us all, even if we know. Yeah. And I think it's really, it's really unfortunate. And, and, you know, for whatever reason with the patriarchy as, is, is, is it a fear of not being able to control everything in every moment? And I think that's a lot of it, but it's obviously like, you know, the, like you were saying that flow isn't is the grace it's it's the earth energy it's the cycle it's the rhythm it's the spiral and it is nature it's i mean it's encoded in our dna a spiral right and it's just i think that that's where so much of people's spiritual deficit and we talked about this a little bit erica i think on our call but like the filling that void i mean that's what the work you do right thirsty for yeah. spirit it's just filling that void that we don't even know where it is because it's been stripped from us. It's been stripped from us, that deep connection to our truest nature. And so I think we're constantly searching outside of ourselves and then you get a little glimmer of it with that freedom, that alcohol or, or it could be fill in the blank, right? It could be anything for so many people, but, um, and then you keep trying to find it. And then at a point it's just not doing it and you're, con and then you're like disappointed and then it kind of takes you lower than you were. And you're like, Oh, you know, so I think for me, that connection to spirit and the divine feminine tuning into my, my cycles and rhythms and, you know, it's not instant gratification, but the more you do it, the more it's the subtlety that becomes so much more, um, like long, you know, longer lasting and the real pleasure that actually has more implications for your future too. It's like, it kind of builds on itself. And so it might not be that quick flood of dopamine right away, but man, I've been doing a ton of ecstatic dancing, um, in the last year. And it's just been like, it's changed my life. I started hula hooping also at hula hoop dancing when I, um, started changing my relationship with alcohol really right after I met you, the two of you, I was kind of just had started my journey and, um, getting into that embodiment piece. And that's why I call myself a holistic alcohol coach, because there's no separation between the mind, body, heart, and spirit when it comes to changing your relationship to alcohol, especially if you want it to be long lasting, you know, and, and really, um, be something that is, you're not, in feeling in deprivation. I want my clients always come away where it's 
it's their alcohol to them is irrelevant, even though they might experience triggers from the past and, you know, old habitual patterns, which is completely normal. They're not wanting to go back. They're not sitting there saying, why can't I do this? They're saying, I don't want to do this. I'm, I'm done with that. That was a, that was a, you know, a different part of my life and I'm moving forward and I'm finding pleasure and purpose over here now. So, um, and I think that that's kind of the distinction between mindset too, is just like, are you going to hold on and grit your teeth and sit in the corner and pout? Cause you can't have a drink. Or are you going to show up? And I say, throw a better party and like put on your sparkle pants and go talk to everyone else and say, you know, you know, get curious, how are other people doing and what's going on and having just a new, a new perspective of every experience that you've done in that light. And I think it's just so true with everything we put ourselves in. Like it could be anything moving, being, becoming a parent, you know, all the things like you can show up grouchy about it, or you can, you know, dive in and, um, fall in love with it, even fall in love with the, you know, the not awesome things about it too. So, yeah. So Mary and I, and my mom, all three of us met at a goddess retreat in Mexico in 2018. So we were doing our work in the divine feminine and we came together Mm. and, um, yeah, now we're still friends and we still connect. And so that journey was incredible for me and for her. And so, yeah, do you want to talk more about your journey to how you got to your holistic alcohol coaching? Uh, absolutely. So in the beginning of 20, so I, my, I have a son who's four years old and um, I was, it was intentional. I was very excited to become a mother, although I didn't ever think I wanted to be one. But when the, t- the clock was ticking, it was very obvious. And I was like, to my partner, I'm like, I'm doing it with or without you. So you want to j- better jump on board. Um, and, um, and then he was like, he, so I, I stayed home. I left me, you know, my full-time job. I was actually working in real estate at the time, but I was still, you know, I was teaching yoga, um, here and there and, um, just fairly part-time and doing like personal training and stuff. But anyway, it was 2018. I declared as my year of yes. And I just thought I, you know, I really want to finally like next level myself. I didn't want to go back to working for someone else. I finally wanted to take my movement practice, all of the stuff I had studied for so long, fitness, um, and yoga and the holistic arts, um, to the next level. And so I just started showing up and I really wanted to create a new sphere for myself. My sphere was really small because I had been home with the baby. Real estate is a small, like you just know the people that you take out and then you don't have a lot of colleagues necessarily. So you're not, you know, you're just not meeting a ton of people. And before that I had been in the service industry for many years. So that was very much a party scene. Um, You know, you meet people via alcohol essentially. And um, you know, you're, you're bonding at the end of the night. So I declared my year of yes, 2018, and I just started saying yes to more things. I've never been a shy person, but going out as an adult, especially as a mom and, you know, and not talking about dirty diapers is like a whole new thing. And you have to really make an intentional decision for that. And so, um, I started hula hoop dancing and that one thing saying yes to that one thing spiraled my entire life. I met the forum of the dance of that particular class is different from yoga because you're not just on your mat and quiet. There's time for actually like interacting. Everyone's, you know, everyone's learning it. It's not something you do. So drop in your hoop, you're, you know, you're all laughing and it's kind of a vulnerable thing. And, um, I had really wanted to, as long as I had been in the yoga community, I really had never made any really close connections there. I, in, in retrospect, it was really because of my shame around my relationship with alcohol. I was kind of this party girl and I really was fear of judgment. I didn't want anyone to like figure it out. And as much as I loved that world and it served me, and I really think it was my saving grace for going to the deep end ever. Um, I just didn't make those connections, but I knew there were like amazing, fun people in that world. And I was finally ready to like, and this was before I stopped drinking altogether. I was finally ready to just be me and just say, you know what? I know there's people in every world that drink. There's people, you know, we all have shit, right? So it's just like, I knew that I didn't need to shame myself anymore, especially becoming a mom, something about that just like opened my eyes to we're all human. Our unique experiences what we need to be expressing. We need to be sharing that more and more. And so 
I had looked into doing a yoga retreat with some local Portland yogis and that was full. And it was actually at the Marta Hade and I saw the goddess retreat and I had done work with Sienna Sherman and I was like all in, I'm like, this is it. Like it was exactly what I needed to do. And, um, then I found out more about the priestess path meeting a Chintia and that when I fig- found that out, it was like this door. And I didn't talk about this at the beginning either, but I am, have been studying the priestess path with a Chintia and, um, have done some initiations in that. And, um, this door that had just been waiting open for me, like revealed itself and it was so obvious and I immediately just fell right into it and fas- I started facilitating a, f- a women's circle. My, the way I was teaching, the way I was coaching and guiding completely just shifted when I started bringing in the divine aspect of it. Um, and when I was a little, when I was little, I grew up in a Catholic, um, in the Catholic church. I didn't go to Catholic school and it was really like, we were a liberal we're liberal Catholics, if you could imagine. Um, and I loved, I always loved the ceremony and the ritual of church. And I actually even thought about being a nun when I was little, but I knew that that didn't sound like as much fun as I wanted to have either. <laughs> um, and so the priest has passed with literally nothing I knew about. And I, um, it's definitely the path for me. And um, I just, I love that, that sovereignty of being, becoming your own, um, your own guide, your own governance, um, and moving from that place and just being, um, being an example for others, being supportive and having that, you know, that power with mentality, um, inviting, extending your hand to everyone, being open and just walking the path to with the sister, the sacred sisterhood that we've created and then creating that. Now I'm like, I feel like the grid that we created there and all the work I continue to do with a Chintia. And now I've done some other work with her. I went with to um, Avalon with her um, in April or no, excuse me. It was in September. And um, so I met another guide woman there that um, is also a priestess path teacher and guide. And now the work I do here, I feel like I'm just adding to that grid of sisterhood but it was something about that divine feminine essence that was never exposed to me really. Like I was close with my mother and she, you know, talked to me about a lot of things, but it was still like, there was always this overarching masculine energy where it didn't go deep into that, those intricacies of what it is to be a woman. And it was when I got to explore that with you guys that it was like the the goddess called, I answered, she roared her ha- beautiful head. And she was the one that was really like, it was like the day before I left Chicala, um, I pulled a card. And I think it was, I don't remember, I think it was like Coventina, it doesn't really matter what the card is. But the message was very clear. And I had been getting it throughout that year it was like you need to stop this drinking or it's going to not only is it are you going to end your life and look back and really be bummed out that you didn't answer your calling but on a physical and health level i was getting some signs that there might be something not good happening for me physically um and emotionally and you know i let the goddess kind of take over um I was just cry thinking about it. And I let, I just really fell into her arms and fell into the arms of the sisterhood that I knew was there that I didn't even know existed. Um, cause I didn't have a lot of close female friends and, um, I'm just continuing to grow that. And I trusted and I continue to keep trusting with unflinching faith. And, um, I keep being caught and supported in every, in every step of the way. And it's been, um, a beautiful, unexpected, but at the same time, extremely familiar experience that I couldn't, I just like that retreat, you know, I just can't even imagine. I I probably would have somehow found my way there because it was definitely happening already. But, um, yeah, I just want to keep creating closer sisterhood because of that. And I just want us all to like, I just kind of keep envisioning this like giant party around my fire pit here, like dancing under the full moon and yeah. um, when we can all get together. So if that's a roundabout way, I mean, I've been on the path since I was 17. As soon as I yeah. found out about yoga, it, it like, it made so much sense to me because I always did have that relationship with the divine, but the way that it was presented to me in the church felt, felt so like 
not fun and the, the patriarchy I was like no this is like stand up sit down stand up sit down and I was like no I need to like move and sing I've always loved to sing and dance I sang my entire school career and I you know play some instruments and like so anyway when I found yoga and I found the breath and that really literal um, connection from the inner to the outer um, and I always have loved to garden and I did that with my grandparents and so anyway like it all just has kind of I paid attention to to the signs and I kept saying yes. And I think that's a really important piece too, especially of the work that I do. I I tell you know women, it's like right away you might not feel super energized to pop up and go meet the whole world, but like you do have to shift your focus. Like if you just quit drinking and sit around and stay home and watch Netflix all the time, you're not you're gonna feel like crap anyway if you did that, you know, like you have to find what sparks joy in you and, and create a future focus of who is that woman that's waiting to re be remembered. And that's really what it is. It was an experience of remembering, a deep remembering of who I am on a soul, my soul self level. So, you know, uh, it's fun that you talk about the path of the priestess because that um, I learned years before I ran into you from my teacher from South America and thus wrote my book and, and you know, mm. and the art of being a woman. And it was really a lovely, like we just never learned the real power of woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that like the things that are our simple joys and our giggly ways and our creative things and like, let's get in the car. Like all <laughs> of that is part of our just beingness. Mm -hmm. yes. And because no one's honored or, or said it, like, let's face it, in one moment, we could call one woman and connect to probably every woman in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Like, no one built that. Nobody right. thought of that. It just exists. Mm -hmm. We have this communal network. And we have these incredible powers just in being a woman that really haven't been honored. So I can understand. It's like a coming home to like, oh, I'm allowed to be playful and... <laughs> I mean, I learned from a very playful school. It wasn't as much ritualistic and all the schools I'm in just have that more fun character about mm -hmm. things. And we didn't have a lot of that. So I could, you know, that's why I took Erica and wanted her to go on that retreat because she had heard my story. But, you know, when your mom tells you. Yeah, it's a little, <laughs> yeah. It's a little different when it's your mom tells It's a little tells different you. than when you actually see. And that was the first time that three teachers were in collab like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in the worldwide circle. So I, that's why I wanted to go because that's mm -hmm. what the feminine is about. Yes. And I loved that, that example. And that's why I really, you know, because there's, there are 